Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to discuss about problem number 7 under the topic root locus. Before that, I will give the link of a video in the description about the procedure to solve a problem. It will give you a clear idea to solve. Right. So here the problem is sketch the root locus for the unity feedback system whose open loop transfer function is given. So here from the transfer function, just tell how many roots and zeros we are having. Look at the denominator. Here the maximum power is 2 and here it is 1, right? So totally we will be having 3 poles, right? And in numerator we don't have any S term. So there are no zeros here. So the first step is to locate the poles and zeros. So here when you equate this S term to 0, S is equal to 0. And again we are having a quadratic equation here. So from the quadratic equation the value of A is 1, B is 6 and C is 10, right? So, just solve the quadratic equation by using the basic max formula and finally we are getting the value of pole as minus 3 plus or minus j1, right. So, totally here we are having 3 poles. Minus 3 plus j1 is one pole and minus 3 minus j1 is the another pole, right. And the next one is step 2 to find the root locus on real axis. So, here this is our S plane, right. This is our real axis and this is our imaginary axis. We have to locate the poles now. So what are all the values? One is at origin. So it is marked here. So this is your origin. And another is, on, is at minus 3 plus j1. So this is the pole. This, here we are having minus 3. So minus 3 and here the value is 1j. Right. And similarly here this pole is minus 3 minus 1j. Right. So after marking the poles, we have to find the existence. So how to find the existence? Here we have to take a test point. For example, assume minus 3 as a test point, right? So to the right hand side of minus 3, how many poles and zeros are there? This is the right hand side part, right? Here we are having only one pole. So it is an odd number. Therefore, the root locus exists between this 0 and minus 3, right? Now again consider some other test point. Let the another test point be at some minus 10 here. So again when you look at the right hand side of minus 10 how many poles are there? Again only one pole. It is an odd number and again the root locus exists between this 0 and minus 10. Right. Again consider some point at infinity. Right. Even if you consider some point at infinity, when you look at the right hand side of that point, again the same thing will exist. Right. Because you are having only one pole at origin. Therefore, the root locus starts at origin and it extends and it exists up to infinity. Right. And step 3 is finding the angle of asymptotes and centroid. So, angle of asymptotes is given by this formula. And here M stands for number of poles and M stands for number of zeros. So here we have to substitute the values of Q starting from 0 till here, till 3. Here we are having 3, right? So we have to find till 3. If we are having 2 here, we have to find till Q. That's it, right? So first we are substituting the value of Q as 0. When you substitute Q as 0, what happens? 180 by 3 which gives 60 degrees and the next thing substitute q equal to 1 when you substitute q equal to 1 the angle is plus or minus 180 degree right and the next thing substitute q equal to 2 again when you solve you are getting the answer as 300 so 300 minus 360 will give you minus 60 degrees right so here i am writing minus sign first minus plus 60 degree on the next one, when, when you substitute Q equal to 3, we are getting the answer as 420. Again, when you sub, subtract 360 degree, here the final answer is plus or minus 60 degrees. Right. The next one is finding centroid. So, sum of poles minus sum of zeros divided by N minus M. So, sum of poles. What are all the values of poles we are having? We are having 0, minus 3 plus J1 and minus 3 minus J1. These are the three values of poles, right? We have to add it. So here we are adding minus we are having no 0 so here 0 is written divided by n minus m the 3 minus 0 is 3. So once you solve the final value of centroid is fine to be minus 2 right. Then the next step is to find the breakaway and breaking point since here we are having complex poles we are going with this step. 
So how to find the breakaway and break in? Again, we have to take the closed loop transfer function, right? So here closed loop transfer function is given by this formula g of s by 1 plus g of s into h of s. Here the value of h of s is 1. So here the value of h of s is 1. So I didn't mention it here, right? The next step is we have to take LCM. So after taking LCM, we are having the closed loop transfer function like this. So what is the characteristic equation? It is the denominator term of the closed loop transfer function. So here this is our characteristic equation. So just substitute the values and frame an expression in terms of k. So finally the value of k is like this, right? Next step is we have to differentiate this k with respect to s. So what is the basic formula of differentiation? It is when a to the power n is differentiated, it is given by n into a to the power n minus 1. Right. So here just substitute the values and finally we are getting an expression like this. Right. Just solving. So s cube when you differentiate becomes 3s square and when you differentiate s square it will become 2s. So 6 into 2 becomes 12. Right. And when you differentiate 10s, this s becomes 1. So finally we will be having 10. So Again, this is a quadratic equation. Now we have to solve this quadratic equation. So from this equation, the value of a is 3, b is 12 and c is 10. Right. Just substitute in this formula and finally the value of roots are found to be minus 1.18 and minus 2.82. Right. Now we have to substitute this value of s in the expression of k. So what is our expression of k? Here this is our expression of k. We have to substitute the value of s in this expression and check whether the value of k is positive or not. Right. So the next thing is we are substituting. When you substitute the value of s as minus 1.18 you see the k is positive and real and again when you substitute minus 2.82 the value of k is again positive and real. So this shows that this root locus has breakaway may, either it may be two breakaway points or one may be breakaway and one may be breaking okay only by drawing the plot on a graph sheet we can finally conclude right and the next step is to find the angle of departure. Since we are having complex poles, we are again proceeding this step, right? So, this is just a rough diagram, right? Here we are having pole at origin and here minus 3 plus j and here minus 3 minus j. So, let us assume let this be your complex pole A and this is be your A star, right? Now, we are going to find the angle theta 1 and theta 2. So, theta 1 is given by 180 minus tan inverse of what is the imaginary value? Here the imaginary value is 1, right? So, 1 divided by what is this? This is 3. The distance is 3, right? So, 1 by 3. By solving, we are having answer like this. And what about theta 2? You see, theta 2 is a straight line, right? So, it is in the L shape. So, here the angle is 90 degrees. So, theta 2 is 90. So, how to find the angle of departure? It is given by this formula 180 minus theta 1 plus theta 2. So, when you substitute the answer is found to be minus 71.6. Just we are rounding it off. We are writing it as minus 72 degrees. Right. Then, what about the angle of departure from the complex pole? Here, we, are, we have considered only one pole, right? The value is minus 72. So, when you consider A star, the value is found to be plus 72 degrees. Right. Here just you have to reverse the sign. That's it. And step 6 is to find the crossing point on the imaginary axis. Here again we have to consider the characteristic equation. You see this is our characteristic equation. The next step is we have to substitute the value of S as J omega. And we have to separate the real and imaginary terms. You see here we have replaced S by J omega. And we have solved J cube is nothing but minus J. And J square is nothing but minus 1. Right. Likewise we are here solving. And the first step is equating imaginary coefficients to 0. So here the imaginary coefficients are minus omega cube plus 10 omega. Right. So here we are equating it to 0. And again we are simplifying. We are moving this 10 omega to the right hand side. That, so that becomes minus 10 omega. So just minus minus get cancelled. And this omega square omega cancels each other. And finally the value of omega square is found to be 10 here. Right. So the value of omega is found to be 
plus or minus square root of 10 which is nothing but plus or minus 3.16 again we are rounding it off as plus or minus 3.2 right then the next step is equating real terms to 0 so here the real terms are minus 6 omega square plus k right so equate it to 0 the value of omega square is 10 right so just substitute here and finally the value of k is found to be 60 this is positive right so whenever the value of k is positive this omega term is said to be the crossing point on the imaginary axis right since we are having a positive value in this problem the root locus crosses the imaginary axis at plus or minus 3.2 point right now we will proceed with the graph sheet so this is our graph sheet the first step is scaling right take the scale according to the values you need so here i had taken the value of scale as 1 centimeter is equal to 0.5 units it is must to mention it right so here as usual this is your real axis and this is your imaginary axis and the first step is we have to mark the poles and zeros so here the values of poles are 0 minus 3 plus or minus j1 so here it is 0 and this is minus 3 plus j1 and this is minus 3 minus j1 right and the next step is finding the centroid and angle of asymptotes here the value of centroid is minus 2 you see here i had marked that on angle of asymptotes is plus or minus 60 degree it goes like this again minus plus 60 degree so here plus or minus 60 degree we have to keep the protractor on the centroid right so 2 is our centroid minus 2 so just keep the protractor on the centroid and the angle is plus 60 degree right so you have to keep the protractor straight and you have to mark the angle and the next one is 180 degree it is a straight line no need and the next one is minus plus 60 degree so whenever minus sign comes first you have to reverse the protractor right just you have to reverse the protractor and you have to mark the 60 degree angle 60 degree angle like this right so after marking the angle of asymptotes you have to join lines from centroid to that angle you can just draw dotted lines like this right so here the angle of asymptotes are drawn right and the next one is we are having two values right either it may be breakaway or break in right just here i had written as breakaway but i don't know only by plotting and drawing root locus we can conclude right so the value is minus 1.18 so here this is that point minus 1.18 right and the next thing is minus 2.82 so here it is marked here 2.82 right yes and the next one is angle of departure so angle of departure we have to mark it on complex poles so here the first angle is it is minus 72 degrees so as usual you have to keep the protractor reverse right and here the angle is 72 degrees you have to mark like that similarly for another pole this for another complex conjugate pole the angle is plus 72 degrees so you have to keep the protractor straight the same thing right then you have to mark an angle of 72 degrees that's it so after marking the angle just we have to draw a small line right so that we can draw the root locus accordingly and the next one is crossing point it is given as plus or minus 3.2 so here this is our 3 and this is our 3.5 right so 3.1 and this is our 3.2 this is plus 3.2 and similarly so 3 3.1 and next lies our 3.2 so here lies our 3.2 right so mark plus 3.2 as well as minus 3.2 so this is the crossing point of the root locus right next we are going to yeah we had um, we have to find the existence of root locus right that i already explained with the rough plot so here there is a root locus okay root locus starts at zero and it extends up to infinity it goes on right and again from the problem you see how many root locus branches are there it is equal to the number of poles right so totally three root locus branches are there 
so we have to find it accordingly and we all know that a root locus will all that is root locus branch will always start at a pole and end at zero right here we have no zeros so we have to assume that the root locus branch will meet the zero somewhere at infinity right so now we will draw so now we will draw the root locus as we all know the root locus will always lie parallel to the angle of asymptotes right so this is our angle of asymptotes so our root locus how it will be here we are having a crossing point also right so our root locus will lie like this right so here we are having a point and here there is a pole right so your root locus branch starts here and again can you able to follow what I am telling? You see, here we are having angle of asymptotes, right? A root locus will always lie parallel to the angle of asymptotes. So here, and again here we are having a point. We don't know whether it is a breakaway or breaking, right? So what happens? A root locus branch which starts at this pole will come and meet this point here. So here, by the appearance of this uh, location of centroid etc etc we are assuming that this is as a breakaway point right so what happens your root locus which starts at this pole comes here it gets breakaway and again we have to consider all the limitations here there is a crossing point and this is your angle of asymptotes right so we have to draw root locus like this Right, because here we are having a crossing point, it should cross the imaginary axis only at this point. And again, similarly, downwards also, the same thing. Right, wait, I will draw you in a better way. So, this is our root locus. Right, so... Now this is over here and the next one you see we are having another two complex poles here. So again here we are having a point right. Now we have to conclude what it is right. So among the three branches we are having three poles so three branches right. So you, you look carefully the first branch starts at this pole it goes over here and this is a breakaway point so it gets broken and it moves like this. So this is your branch one. Right. And again, here we are having two poles, right? So, the root locus branch have to start at these poles. So, one branch start at this pole, right? Again, it has to come back, right? And again, it travels like this. And here, there is a breakaway and it gets broken and it moves downwards like this. Yes or not? Yes, right? Because the rule is the root locus ha branch has to always start at a pole here so what about this point so this point is said to be break in point right because the root locus which is located somewhere on the imaginary axis again gets back into the negative real axis so this point is said to be a break in point again here we are having an angle so what happens here just draw a root locus branch just like this Right, so this is a branch, it moves like this and again it goes here and there is a breakaway point so it gets broken. So again it moves downward, so let this be your branch number 2. Right, so this is your root locus branch 2 here. Right, yes. Now the next thing is, we are having another pole here, right. So again this point is a breaking point because... A complex pole enters into the real axis here. So just again draw a root locus like this. So it just comes here. Okay, It starts from this part. It moves over here and it reaches the breaking point. And it starts moving like this towards infinity. And this is your branch number 3. Right. So now everything is finished right. Here we are having 3 poles. And here we are having 3 branches. So the main thing which you have to keep in mind is a root locus branch always starts at a pole and end at zero, right? That is the key thing. And the second thing is here this is the problem where we have both breakaway as well as breaking point, 
right only depending upon the location of the roots we are concluding whether it is a breakaway or it is a break in and the key factor is the typical root locus plot will be like this we will be having some around six or seven plots okay you have to keep all those images in your mind before drawing a plot and the thing is whenever you are having an angle of asymptotes it is damn sure that the root locus will always lie parallel to the angle of asymptotes because it is assumed that our root locus will meet the zero that is it will meet zero or angle of asymptotes somewhere at infinity right so the thing is when you solve more problems you will get a clear idea right so here comes the end of the problem if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section thank you